Hey guys, it's Alex. Welcome back to the channel. One of the things I love about living in Victoria, BC is the amazing access to the outdoors and the natural beauty that our city offers. I've talked about the best hikes before, I've talked about the best beaches, but what about the best parks? Especially within 20 minutes of downtown Victoria, the access to the outdoors is incredible in our city, and I wanna give you my 10 favorite parks in Victoria. So let's get into it. Now to quickly qualify this list, I'm looking for variety. So not just a great playground, not just a beautiful beachfront, but a mixture of elements and the perfect park package. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you leave me a like, and if you're new here, subscribe for more great content on a beautiful city. Before we get to the top 10, it would be rude not to mention these few parks. So I've got three honorable mentions that I wanted to highlight because they're great places to check out if you haven't been there yet. The first of which is Arbutus Cove and Glencoe Cove. These parks in Gordon Head and Saanich are tucked away in a beautiful residential area and have some of the best and most private beach areas in all of Saanich. However, they fall a little bit short on some of the green space, manicured or man-made elements that I was looking for on this list, so they didn't quite make the cut. The next honorable mention on my list is Vic West Park. Right in the heart of Vic West, you have a beautiful man-made park with green space, playing fields, a basketball court, and the city's best skate park. There's also a nice enclosed dog park where a lot of dogs can run around and chase each other off leash. But to me, it's more of a man-made park and doesn't have some of the natural beauty that some of the other parks in Victoria offer. And my last honorable mention is Gonzales Hill Regional Park. It's actually the smallest of all of the CRD parks and doesn't feel as much like open park space. Although there are some nice trails that weave through it, you end up at one of the best views of the Southern neighborhoods of Victoria that I can think of. There's a 1914 observatory perched at the crest of the hill and looking over Gonzales Bay, Harling Point and back towards McNeil Bay and Oak Bay, I can't think of a better spot to introduce yourself to some of these communities in Fairfield and Oak Bay than from Gonzales Hill. Number 10 on my list, Uplands Park in Cattle Point. This 30 hectare park sits at the southern end of John Olmsted's Uplands subdivision in the District of Oak Bay and is in one of Victoria's most coveted neighborhoods. The park features coastal forests, Gary Oak Meadows, beautiful rocky outcroppings, and one of Victoria's best boat launches at Cattle Point. The fun bit of history here is that Cattle Point got its name because steamships used to drop cattle off to wade to shore from this location between the 1860s to early 1900s. There's a great area to park on stormy days and there's lots of benches and picnic tables if you want to head out to have a picnic lunch at Cattle Point. Coming in at number nine is Anderson Hill Park. This 2.79 hectare park at the crest of a hill in South Oak Bay sits above McNeil Bay and McMicken Point and looks across the Enterprise Channel to the Trial Islands and across the Strait of Juan de Fuca to the Olympic Mountain Range in Washington State. It's like the better version of Gonzales Hill just because there's a lot more green space, Gary Oak Meadow and natural forested trails and there's space for your dogs to roam. They're actually allowed off leash between July and March. Coming in at number eight is Esquimalt Gorge Park. This park sits on the southern shoreline of the Gorge Waterway, just west of the bridge, and has history that goes back more than 100 years. The park was first established by the BC Electric Railway Company in 1905, but as far back as the 1860s, local settlers used this 11.65 hectare area for recreation. Outside of the popularity of swimming in the gorge at the time, the company decided that it wanted to create more amusements to attract visitors to the park. They enlisted the help of two local Victorians of Japanese descent, Yoshihiro Kishida, and Hayato Takata, who contracted to provide the park with an authentic Japanese tea garden. They also planned for a floating sampan tea house and an amusement park. To help ensure the authenticity of the gardens, they brought Yoshihiro's father, Isaburo Kishida, a professional gardener from Yokohama, Japan, to help design and install the gardens. The Japanese tea gardens were an almost overnight success and were hugely popular among Victoria's elite. Sadly, the gardens were destroyed in 1941 because of anti-Japanese fervor during World War II. Through the generosity of the Kinsman Club and the township of Esquimalt, the park has been brought back to life in the last few decades, and a lot of that Japanese influence has returned. There's a beautifully manicured Japanese garden, and the brand new pavilion has a lot of architectural elements inspired by Japanese ideas. Outside of access to the waterway, which is hugely popular with swimmers, paddleboarders, and kayakers, there's great open spaces for picnics, dog walks, nice playgrounds, and beautiful gardens, as well as many fine heritage trees, including a few hundred-year-old umbrella pines. Coming in at number seven, and next up on my list, is Elk and Beaver Lake Regional Park. This 442 hectare park sits right in the heart of Saanich, just west of the Patricia Bay Highway, 
and has great freshwater lakes that are great for swimming, canoeing, and fishing with catchable rainbow trout, and has a number of walking and equestrian trails. The trail and 10 kilometer loop that I mentioned in my best hikes video is resurfacing here, but it's not just a great place to hike. There's also awesome beaches, group picnic areas, and a fishing float with access for people with disabilities. There's a nature center and tons to do with your family. Whether you like getting outside for some great water sports, or you just wanna hang out by one of the beaches, Elk and Beaver Lake right in the heart of Saanich are sure to please. Coming in at number six on my list is a park that I don't feel gets nearly as much recognition as it deserves. Banfield Park in Vic West. If you walk across the Selkirk Trestle, you'll see this park lined along the southern shore of the Gorge Waterway, a little bit further down from Esquimalt Gorge Park and closer to the Inner Harbor. Getting back to the qualification standards that I was talking about at the beginning of this video and the variety that I was looking for, this 6.34 hectare park truly has it all. You have basketball courts, tennis courts, the Vic West Community Center, allotment gardens, a great playground, open green spaces and benches perfect for picnics, and unquestionably the best place to swim along the gorge, down at the public dock, as well as a new dock installed by our friends at Arise, right in the center of this little cove and sheltered bay. Add into that mix that you've got some community hubs like Fry's Bakery across the street where you can grab a pizza on a Sunday afternoon and you have a deadly summer combination. Grab a pizza, have a picnic with your family, get out on your kayak or paddleboard, or maybe go for a dip in the gorge in the best place to swim along this waterway. Banfield Park has it all. It's slept on and it's a great park. Coming in at number five on our list is Willows Beach. The first beachfront park on our list, and for good reason, Willows Beach is arguably one of the best, maybe the top three beaches in all of Greater Victoria, but it's more than just a beach. Although you could spend a full day enjoying and exploring a couple of kilometers of sandy beachfront with views across to San Juan Island and Mount Baker, there's more to this park than meets the eye. There's a great playground, an esplanade, a walkway, beautiful open green space that's the site of the annual Oak Bay Tea Party, and a lovely tea room where you can grab a quick bite. You're also very close to Estevan Village, which I've mentioned in previous videos, where you could grab a seaside meal like fish and chips from the galley and enjoy the day at Willows Beach. A special beach, a special park in a lovely community. Coming in at number four on my list, a true sea to sky park with some of the best trails, hiking routes, and walkways that you'll find anywhere in Greater Victoria, Mount Douglas Park. This 188 hectare park spans from the beachfront at Mount Douglas Beach all the way to the summit and gives you some of the best perspective and views across southern Vancouver Island from anywhere on our list today. The park sits in Saanich, who began managing the park in 1992 between the Blenkinsop Valley and seaside communities in Cordova Bay and Gordon Head. Going back a few years, local First Nations have used the area in and around Pecols, or Mount Douglas, for thousands of years, and the mountain was originally known to Europeans as the Hill of Cedars, hence Cedar Hill Road, because Fort Victoria, built in 1843, had its cedar pickets milled using wood from the park. Governor James Douglas established this park in 1858 as a government reserve, and government work projects initiated in the Depression years led to the construction of Churchill Road, which is the paved roadway that takes you all the way up near the peak of Mount Doug, and is a great place to drive up and catch this view. As the largest urban forest on the Saanich Peninsula, there is so much to explore at Mount Doug Park. Whether you want to catch a glimpse of some wildlife and you're down at the beach looking for orcas or seals, you're at the picnic area with your family, or you want to hike more than 21 kilometers of trails that are graded for different experience levels from green to black, Mount Doug is ready-made for your winter or summer excursions to experience one of the best settings for natural beauty on southern Vancouver Island. Coming in at number three is Cadboro Gyro Park in one of Saanich's most desirable neighborhoods, Cadboro Bay. The park, which sits at more than six hectares in its current form, has historical significance, an interesting folklore story, and boasts the best beach in all of Greater Victoria. Archival documents suggest the Lekwungen First Nations had lived on the bay from approximately 100 BC to 1911. 
Two families, the Chilcoich and Chaconan, traditionally lived in temporary settlements found in protected bays along the waterfront. After 1843, when Fort Victoria was established, these smaller villages were largely abandoned for the security and trading opportunities gained by being closer to the new fort. Another thing you should know about Cabra Bay is the legend of the sea serpent that roams the waters just off the coast. From a mystery born in the 1930s, a number of reports have surfaced over the years of the sighting of a sea monster in Cabra Bay to rival the Loch Ness Monster. Witnesses describe it as a 10 meter long serpent with the head of a horse, and there have been more than 200 accounts of this beast over the years. If you're wary of the tale of the sea monster, maybe don't go too far out on your paddleboard onto Cabra Bay and stick to the park where the concrete man-made reincarnation of it sits for your kids to scale through the day. Not only do we have the best sunny south-facing sandy beach in all of Greater Victoria, but we also have probably the best playground on our list today with the famed Cabrosaurus, octopus, a ship for your kids to climb on, swing sets, zip lines, great open green space and picnic benches for your family picnics, as well as all of Cabra Bay Village right up the road, where you can grab a couple groceries from Pepper's Foods, maybe a little takeout from Thai Lemongrass, or a nice coffee or tea from Mocha House or Olive Oleos. It's all right there, and it's such a great package. I just couldn't not put this park in the top three. Now, a very tough decision was where I was going to place the top two picks and who would get the top spot as the best park in Victoria. My own personal bias affected this a little bit, and I was trying to think a little bit outside of the box, maybe for a park that's not as talked about as the no-brainer answer. For me, maybe this is a 1B, but coming in at number two is Saks Point Park in Esquimalt. Sax Point Park tugs at my heartstrings because it just has some of that Victoria magic that makes living on the Pacific Ocean so special. A connectivity between sea and sky, beautiful ocean vistas across the Juan de Fuca Strait towards the Olympic Mountain Range in Washington State, open green space, Douglas fir and grand fir with nesting eagles in the treetops, maybe catch a glimpse of some orca whales or seals floating by, space to drive in on those storm watcher days, manicured gardens that are the quintessential British influence on Victoria's history, and all of these things come together in such a nicely composed package that's been well cared for since its inception in 1934 during World War II. Saks Point Park with its little beaches and coves, private places is less traveled than my number one pick. And for that reason, I had a tough time not putting it at the top spot. This is a place that local residents in Esquimalt enjoy. And ultimately a place I think more Victorians should come down and experience. Saks Point, almost number one, not quite. Let's save the best for last. With roughly 740,000 square meters of parkland, the best park in Victoria, BC is Beacon Hill Park. So how did Beacon Hill Park find its way to the top of our list today? Well, it's probably the most culturally significant of our list today. It's steeped in history and it gives you the most variety of any of the parks in Greater Victoria. I find myself as a local not going here as much as I should and almost taking it for granted because it appears to be a bit of a tourist trap. But if you spend a few minutes walking through Beacon Hill Park, you're quickly reminded why this is such a magical place. For thousands of years, Beacon Hill has been a place of cultural and sacred significance to the Lekwungen people, whose activities of cultivating cannabis and other native plants for food help shape the landscape of this area. It's also considered to be archaeologically significant because of this rich First Nations history and contains several known and potential sites, such as an existing ancient First Nations burial ground on the southeast slope of Beacon Hill, which is of profound importance. The park gets its name from the first signs of European influence in 1846, when navigation beacons were placed on the crest of a hill, hence Beacon Hill Park. The particular appeal of the park led to its reservation as a park in 1858 by Governor James Douglas. This decision was based on typical British colonial settlement plans, which detailed the division of lands for schools, churches, and other settlement necessities, including parks. By this time, European settlers had already been enjoying the park as the area was used for horse racing and cricket. Douglas himself was one of the members that would race around the track, which is today's Circle Drive. The park has been through a number of iterations over the years, 
Notably, in the late 19th century, just like Macaulay Point and Fort Rod Hill, there was a coastal defense system and batteries placed at Finlayson Point to protect from a potential Russian invasion. But the most notable, and what you'll see today, is the influence of landscape architect John Blair. The city held a competition for an overall landscape plan in 1889, and although Henry J. Cresswell won the competition, the designs of John Blair, a 30-year landscape design veteran who did not enter, were selected instead. It was one of Blair's last major commissions and exemplified a typical English landscape style incorporating the existing environment with significant modifications to create a picturesque landscape. Blair's design included beautiful lakes and bridges, a zoo, a bear pit, and a deer enclosure. The zoo opened in 1890 at Cook and Dallas and continued operating in various states until it was re-established as a children's petting zoo that you see today in 1973 along Circle Drive. The bear pit housed a grizzly, cinnamon, black, and a rare Kermode bear named Ursus. The bear pit closed in 1948 after Ursus died. Deer lived on the property from 1889 to 1990 when the last doe moved to Royal Roads Military College. The Robert Burns Monument, first of many monuments, was installed around 1900, then a children's playground, and in 1910 a lawn bowling green and first clubhouse was added. Today you'll find that a lot of Blair's original vision has been retained, but modern amenities have been added, like two playgrounds, two spray parks, the Cameron Bandshell stage, three public washrooms, a putting green, a baseball diamond, tennis courts, pickleball courts, a cricket pitch, two sports fields, lawn bowling, picnic shelter, Gary Oak Meadows, footpaths, flower beds, a rose garden, story pole, which is the largest totem pole in all of Canada, and of course, the Beacon Hill Petting Zoo. There's so much to do here in a day, whether you're just visiting Victoria, or if you live here and haven't been in a few years, I can guarantee that time at Beacon Hill Park is time you won't forget. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you didn't agree with my list, make sure you let me know what your favorite park in Victoria, BC is in the comments down below. This channel is not just about real estate related content, but we're also talking about lifestyle in one of the best cities in Canada. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure that you do, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.